Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about concurrency and threads. The reason I want to talk about concurrency because once we understand about the concurrency it will become much more simpler to talk about threads. And the idea behind concurrency is very simple and plain and that idea is that as a developer when you write a program you would expect the machine or the computer to run multiple tasks in parallel. For example, right now I'm recording this video on, on a particular laptop which is recording my voice, which is also recording the screen, which is also running the Eclipse IDE and also running our Chrome browser. It is also have it also have opened multiple background applications. So there are a lot of tasks running in parallel at the same time. And that's the idea about concurrency. Now, how do we work with concurrency in Java is with the help of processes and threads. So these are the two basic units of execution when we talk about concurrent programming in Java and when we talk about processes you can think of a process as basically an execution environment or I should call it as a standalone execution environment. Think of a logical box which is completely cut out from everything and it has its own environment. For example again the recording software is running in its own execution environment and when we talk about process process generally has and everything or a private set of all the runtime resources it needs and the memory space it needs. Now there's another concept or another construct which is very important is threads. So threads are also sometimes called lightweight processes and basically when we talk about threads it's a thread also has an execution environment but creating a new thread requires a lot less resources than creating a new process. And you can also think of threads as a mini version of a process because a process can have multiple threads. Remember that statement that a process can have multiple threads. Threads always exist within a process. And whenever you start a process, there will be at least one thread attached to it. And each thread is basically a task. For example, the voice recording can be a, a process, and inside that, the mic recording uh, expression or the mic recording or task can be run by a particular thread. Let's take another example that when you play games, let's say you're playing a racing game. So when you play the racing game, there are multiple things happening at once. You see the current speed of your car or bike on the screen. You also see your leaderboard position, what ranking you have in the race currently. You also see some other kind of uh, features like player's health or the car's health or the fuel uh, consumption available and lots of other stuff the graphics the motorcycle the other comp other competitors bikes and their speeds and their distance to you as well so if you see all of this are running are different threads there's a different thread to show your current speed there's a different thread to show the current leaderboard position there's a different thread to show the fuel uh, indicator etc everything is running in a different thread so all of these threads need to run at the same time in your program for a complete immersive user experience. And that's what we mean when we say multi-threading, that we want multiple threads to run at the same time to create a better experience in the application. So that's the basically the theoretical part of it. Please do read about more about how threads work and how processes work. And there's a lot more documentation available in the Java docs as well when we talk about threads. But I will keep the theoretical part to this particular point. And now we will move to an Eclipse example to see how we can create threads. So with that, let's move to the Eclipse IDE. And here I have a demo prepared basically. So what I have here is a threading demo class which has a public static void main method and it has a simple for loop. And inside the for loop, I see this strange code here where I am initializing two threads and starting them. So that's all I'm doing here. But let's see how this thread one and thread two class have been written and why do I see two different ways of initializing them. Let's go deeper into this now. So let's see how thread one can be created. So first of all, you can create a thread by just creating a simple class, but make sure that you extend it with the pre-built thread class. This thread class is from coming from Java. So from the JDK basically. So the moment you extend your normal class from the thread class, then you will have to override the run method. So if I show you the thread class here, this is the thread class uh, implementation available inside the JDK. And this is the class which is getting uh, called when you are extending is from the thread class. And this thread class will ask you 
to override a run method. Here the override annotation is missing. So let me just add this for better understanding. So you need to override the run method and this is something which you need to do so that you can specify what happens when you run the thread. So this run method will be called whenever the thread is running. At this particular point, I would also like to tell you that there are different states in the thread. So there is a thread which says thread is ready. Then there is a state which is which says thread is running. There is also a state where the thread is waiting for an IO input from the user from the console or the command line. There can also be a state which says dead where the thread has completed its task and it's not working. There can also be a state which is called sleep state where the thread is paused. So there are different states of the thread. And in this example, we are going to focus primarily on three states, which is the ready state and the running state and the completed state. So when you call the run method, the thread state is going to change to running and whatever code you write inside this particular run method will be the logic which this particular thread is supposed to execute. Here I'm just putting a dummy logic where I'm just uh, printing a sysout. But definitely if you try to create your threads, this will contain your actual business logic. For example, that fuel indicator code or for the leaderboard position code will go inside this run method. And then I'm catching an exception if there's an exception, but obviously there will not be an exception coming in because I have nothing here literally. So that's what we are, we are doing when we are creating this thread one class. And let's come back to the threading demo now. So to initialize a thread or initialize might not be a right word to run a thread. The first thing which you need to do is to initialize the class containing the run method. So I would avoid calling this class as thread because technically this is just a class. So you initial, so you basically create an object of the thread just like you create the object of any other class. There is nothing new here, right? So we just say new thread one and then we call t1 dot start. Now, if you observe carefully, there is no start method here. We just had a run method, but this code is still compiling fine and I'm calling the start method here because the start method is the internal method of the thread class, which in turn is going to call the run method. So you are never going to invoke the run method directly. You just need to start the thread, which is going to change the state of the thread from ready to running. So the start method has the responsibility of changing the state to running and the way the start method is going to do that is by calling the run method internally inside the JDK itself. From developer perspective, you just need to call the start method and that's it. The thread will start running and whatever is present in the run method will get executed. So that's the way to start the thread. Second thing, I have one more thread created here, which is the thread two class. So in this case, when I create a thread two class, I'm not extending it from the thread class. Rather, I am implementing the runnable interface here. So this is a different interface available, which is a functional interface, which means it will have just one method, which is the run method. But the interesting thing is that here, when I created thread one, I said extends thread. But here, when I'm creating the second thread, I'm not using extends thread, but I'm using implements runnable. Let's understand why do we do that first of all. The reason Java provides two different ways of creating threads is because there might be a use case that you need to extend your thread to class from some of your custom Java class. Remember Java does not support multiple inheritance. So at a time you can only extend this class from one class. So what if there was no runnable interface and you need to extend this thread to from student class, let's say. So you need to do class thread to extends student for example the student is not present here but let's assume it is so you do this and then you also have to extend it from thread now java doesn't support multiple inheritance and this will not work so what would you do if you have to also create it as a thread but also extend it from some of your parent class you will not be able to do that and that's the reason java provides the implements runnable because then you can extend it from any of your super class of your interest and at the same time also implement, implement it with runnable interface so that you can treat this class as a thread. So that's the reason Java provides two different ways of creating threads. Remember that it's a very important concept. And once you implement runnable, again, it will ask you to override the run method. So I will just put override annotation here. So once you override the run method, again, you can write whatever logic you want this particular thread to execute inside the run block. Coming back to the main class. So 
when you are extending from thread the initialization initialization is very simple where you create the object and you call the start method on the object but if you are creating a thread by implementing the runnable interface the initialization of the thread is a bit different and it's different in this particular part on the left hand side you still say thread t2 remember you are saying thread and not thread2 this is a this is the java thread class this is the jdk thread class not your own thread class so you say thread t2 then you say new thread and inside the new thread you provide your own class type thread2 was your own class type so you specified the, your own custom thread class here inside the new thread constructor this thread class is the jdk class if you click on this you will see this is from the jdk class so that's the difference extending thread simple initialization implementing runnable interface do the initialization like this and after that you call the sim the similarly the start method which is in turn going to call the run method so that was how you create threads differently and now let's run this program to understand how the output looks like when we run these threads in loops remember i am initializing 10 instances of each of these threads so in total there would be 20 output lines so if i go to run as java application i see this output here so let's observe this output for once so thread 1 thread 2 is running in sequence in the first time but then you see thread 1 is running twice and then thread 2 is running twice then again you see a good sequence but again thread 2 has run twice here again thread 1 has run twice if i go further down thread 1 runs once then again thread 2 runs twice thread 1 runs once thread 2 runs once so there is no particular order here though based on the code which we have written we should expect thread 1 is running from here and then thread 2 is running output from here in a sequential fashion but we don't see the sequential fashion here and this is the power of concurrency this is because threads never run in sequence they run in parallel and which thread will execute first you can't really predict that so it's so be very careful when you whenever you are writing multi threading code because you cannot predict the sequence of execution because threads are going to run whenever they find the idle cpu so the key is the idle cpu whenever a thread finds an idle cpu it is going to occupy that cpu and going to run its own execution and the moment its execution finishes the other thread will jump in and take up and take a piece of the cpu so whichever thread gets the idle piece of the cpu is going to execute and that is the reason you see this randomized output the next time you are going to run you will see a different random order so so this time you see thread 1 ran four times You, you did not see this in the previous execution if you run it again you will see again a different output this time the thread one ran thrice so every time you will run this you will see a different sequence there is no guarantee of order because the threads are running in parallel and they are running whenever they get the idle cpu that's the bottom line so this is how we are going to create threads and remember you are, you cannot guarantee the sequence of the execution so write your code accordingly and use the threads for independently running parallel threads which do not depend upon each other and that's all i want to cover in this particular session in the next session we are going to talk about how do we synchronize the threads that's also a very popular concept which is also called thread synchronization so we are going we are going to focus on thread synchronization in the next session and if you like this particular video a thumbs up would be massively appreciated and please don't forget to subscribe to simply code for more programming related videos thank you and we'll meet again in the next session